<laughs> and we are, of course, live on the big one, the internet phone in. Friday night, nothing gets past me. So much to talk about, so little time to do it in. Get to the telephones, I say, because it won't be long before we are chit chatting. Lots to talk about tonight. And as I say, the time will just fly. We've only got one hour. We have to finish at 11 o'clock sharp. So get your telephones. You'll see the number in front of you. Good evening. Hello to all our TikTokers tonight. Hello, you're live in Scottish morning. Who's that? Hello, Scotty. It's Kareem. Ah, oh, Kareem. Well done, <laughs> sir. Fantastic. Hello, I've had one or two nutcases on tonight, so there's been a few numbers blocked. Have you been on earlier? No, well, no, I was on TikTok Live. And then ah. somebody was trying to phone in, so it was just very, very interesting. Fantastic right. stuff. Welcome, welcome. How are you? They're saying on TikTok. All the TikTokers are joining us now, Kareem. Hello, TikTokers. Ah, welcome. This is Kareem TikTokers. Say welcome to him. You're watching Scotty McClue's Internet phone in on Friday night, 10 o'clock until 11. And there's somebody saying, I'm from Scotland too. But they've said, I'm from Scotland. Isn't that good? Now then, Kareem, I saw, thank you for sending me today that thing about the monarchy in Scotland. I wish these halfwits would give up because they're going to damage independence. I hope you don't mind, but I cut and paste what you wrote because good. on that same Facebook group, another picture came up and I just copied and pasted what you put good. into the comments. No, I don't yeah. mind at all, Kareem. No problem at all. I mean, get that round because it's serious stuff, you know? What I don't understand is that group um, is, it's not just one group, it's like all yes groups, all yes movements that come together and they go on the walks. So I don't know if that was somebody from the group that put that in. I don't know if that was somebody like anybody just posting that picture and, and right. some people. But what was interesting, Scotty, there were people that were not for it as well, and they were agreeing with your comment and liking it, and other people making comments to stop it as well. All right, so it got a good reaction, Kareem. I haven't managed to find it again. I had a look, um, and other people agreed as well. You've obviously got the numpties, uh, as, as, you, as you know, that don't know anything about it. No, they don't understand how it goes. They just go, get these freeloaders out of here, because they yeah. don't understand how the whole thing operates. You know, and, and, and it really worries me because it makes the nationalists look very amateurish and very lacking in intelligence. And I don't think that's the case. Yeah. I think for every group, you've always got the numpties that attach themselves to it. Yes. This, but it, it was the, the, the under one banner, as, as the group is, that's, that's the group. That's all. It's not just one little group it's lots of groups that all come together lots of groups coming together yeah well they need to you know they need to have a nice strong cause this is why we want independence not just to get away from the tories or get away from westminster or whatever it's actually saying we want to take charge of our own economy now to do that you must give the impression that you are highly intelligent sensible mature people who could handle independence i i i, I think the, the politicians i think will do a very good job regardless i think if you have the smp down negotiating at the table down south uh, you know we should have sent them when they were dealing with brexit because yes. they've gotten a better deal you know but i would rather have nicola sturgeon and the rest down fighting no we want this 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 and that's it but the yet that certain groups i actually think that you may get some of these um unionists that attach themselves to the yes groups to try and cause a bit of trouble uh, i can see i wouldn't i wouldn't be so yeah i wouldn't be surprised a bit of what we used to call dark propaganda uh -huh. yeah you know um, because I, I just think at the moment as you know most polls that are coming out now yes are in the lead um 
the, the Tory government done a, a study which the SNP took them to court. The court said that they must release the documents and the Tories have still not released it. They do not want people to see whatever the research was. Uh, well, they never have. I mean, they didn't want us to see um, Gavin Macron's fabulous report in 1975 when it showed you just how much Westminster had squirreled away from Scotland. You know, I mean, that's always been the panic. Scotland is a very, very wealthy country. It's a cash cow for Westminster. Uh -huh. Queen Anne realised this, and she managed to, you know, bribe them 313 years ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what disappoints me, as I spoke to you yesterday, Scotty, was obviously when I had that run in with that silly woman, uh, just absolutely. I think what really annoyed me the most was there was no... Right. It was as if Scotland is just a second class, lower class country and you just best just let Westminster rule you. And I thought this is a fellow Scot, you know, and just having no pride in their own country, can't look at the facts, can't see that as an independent country. We'll do damn fine. Yes. But I respect the fact that we have unionists and they will fight to the nail for their cause. But at the end of the yes, day, but I mean, I there, there is, there has never, ever, ever been a proper cognitive de facto argument made for the union, because the union is built on sand. So even although it's very kind of you to say the unionists will fight for their cause, they don't have a cause apart from saying, "Can we please keep a vice-like grip on Scotland's cash?" That's yeah. that's that's their only that's their only cause. There is no de facto for saying, well, it's better for Scotland to stay joined to Westminster because it actually isn't economically. I mean, as you know, I'm apolitical. I don't have any axe to grind. I don't have any chips on my shoulder. I'm just purely looking at the economics. I saw what Ma Margaret Thatcher did to Scotland in the late 70s, 80s, and early 90s. And um, what I'm actually saying is, uh, you know, we need to repair this. And to do that, we need to hang on to an extra £48 billion of cash and start doing up. Greenock and Paisley and Kilmarnock and Hamilton and Airdrie and Wishaw and Stirling and Dundee and Aberdeen and Perth, etc., etc. We need to be subsidizing ferries to the Western Isles. We need to have, um, you know, air services to the Western Isles. We need to rebuild the Scottish economy. Yeah, and I mean, that's, there's nothing political in that it's purely economic yeah and I, I think anybody from any party should be able to put their party political beliefs to the side and just go look this is the economy it doesn't matter who you support you want the economy to do well yes you want to be jobs. that's all i'm what interested in is people in scotland doing better Getting a fair crack at the whip so we don't have lost generations. I mean, they're they're going absolutely berserk about the fact that young people have lost a year with the pandemic. But young people have lost 50 years with the way yeah. Scotland's been treated. Mm -hmm. No, it's a good way of putting it. Yeah. You know. So to ask you the other time at the about when we said that, that Westminster, if they lose Scotland, obviously mostly it's to do with the oil, etc. Um, I didn't know about Northern Ireland, but you said it was to do with a lot of the ports around or, uh, Northern Ireland. Um, that's why they, they hang on to Northern Ireland. Well, no, no, Northern Ireland I don't think is such a good uh, investment as Scotland. You, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And they've thrown Northern Ireland under a bus with Brexit. You see, but Northern Ireland, I mean, Northern Ireland was purely 100 years ago next year, the annexation of six counties of Ireland who wanted to stay under the, the protection of the crown. Right, right, okay. You see, because Ireland has got such a checkered history and Ulster is not six counties. Ulster is either eight or nine counties and is an ancient kingdom. So you see, you've got people, what the Irish people need to do is 
not chuck their past, but not try and relive it every day and not not be filled with dislike and hatred that they've had their heads stuffed with. That's what's blocking the advancing. If you're in very clear terms and you said, Westminster, we have absolutely nothing against you per se, but you're not helping Scotland economically. You know, you're yeah. taking too much dosh for yourself. What does Wales have? I, I don't know much about Wales. But well, Wales, again, is very, very rich in resources in terms of coal and, yeah. uh, you know, iron and, and, and all these sort of things. But you see, we're, I, I mean, I'll tell you what I had a thought today. Last week I got told. Britain used to trade very, very big on wool. So in the very early 1800s, the money, agrarian revolution, the land, agriculture, the money was in the countryside. So the early 1800s, uh, you know, you, you, you still had the money in the countryside because the Industrial Revolution, although it started in the 1780s, 1790s, it didn't really get going, but it lasted 150 years. And we're talking steel, coal, iron, railways, cities, mining, more coal for more steel, for more iron to build more ships because we're an island and on goes the cycle. But that's your industrial revolution, your agrarian revolution. We very, very, well, we were absolutely massive in exporting woolen and leather goods. Where does right. woolen leather come from? The countryside, from the sheep, from the cows, etc., etc. skins, all these sort of things. So we were very big in exporting that. Now, right now, wool is so worthless that people are sending it to landfill. Right. Now, okay. we've got a problem coming up. They're going to charge more for gas and electricity because they can't get their act together. When I was a wee boy, each town had its own gas. And they switched off town gas and went to North Sea gas. Now, you had the local gas board. And I don't know, you'd be too young to remember, Kareem, but there were great big things called gasometers. You would see there was a huge one out in the M8, and these things filled with gas. They floated on gas on the upside-down principle, and you would see them rising and lowering as the supply went down. Then they would rise again as more gas was manufactured. So Glasgow had its own gas board, and the gas lamps came in late 1800s early 1900s then you had electricity coming in as well yeah uh -huh. so all your street lights were gas even when i moved into my first flat uh -huh. Leary the lamp lighter would come round and light the gas in the close every wow. night wow. in the west end of glasgow wow. so so yeah. you know you would see it so there was a lot of gas lamps gas lamps and all the tenements if you raised your floorboards you'd see the gas pipes all screwed up and capped off for the yeah. gas lighting and it was beautiful it hissed and you could see all the railway stations had it up until the 60s and 70s gas lighting and it came from the town gas so we made our own gas so there would be none of this the wholesale price has gone up you see because you are making it yourself now point i'm making here kareem we think, right, okay, we can't afford to heat our houses to these standards if they're going to charge us more money. Let's get our wool and spin ourselves a few thick jumpers because I can assure you, if you're sitting in hand-knitted wool socks with woolen trousers, right, and, and, a, and a couple of big woolly jumpers and a woolly hat, you will not be cold and woolen gloves. Yeah, yeah. Now, once you stick water. that lot on, you'll soon save yourself a couple of hundred quid. Yeah, yeah. And they can say like to the thing. companies, <laughs> well, don't worry, you shove the price up as much as you like because we'll no be needing it. I, I think it's just, I, I think it's great. I mean, my, I could collect my parents today from the airport. They came back from Spain. And they were joking, they're saying that their gas and electricity changes in a month's time. And I said, well, it's a very bad time to, 
be looking for uh, gas and electricity, obviously, with uh, the prices going up. Yes. You know. Yes, but I mean, I mean, you know, there are these alternatives. I mean, I'm just looking here on TikTok while you're on, Karim. Yeah. Uh, so there we are. There's still one in Well Street and Paisley, says Bob's. So fantastic yeah. stuff. Who else have we got here? Mummy, pause. What happened to off Gem? They're supposed to monitor the sky high prices. They're still doing it, but they're going to move the cap, apparently. The gas was made by burning coal and extraction through mercury. Well, I don't think mercury would go very well down at the conference, but, but burning coal, we've still got plenty of coal. Now, I know we're having to be carbon free and all that sort of stuff, but if it comes to paying the electricity and gas board or having a lovely wee coal fire, you know? Is there not a way to, to make coal, uh, coal like, not a, you know, not as, what's the word I'm looking for, like, in terms of pollution? Is there not cleaner ways to use coal? Well, yes, there is. I mean, you, you know, you can, you can, um, you can burn it in cleaner ways, more efficient and effective ways. You see, all the steamships, all your transport, your railways and your Clyde steamers were all coal fired. And the coal came from round about you. It came from Lanarkshire. It came from Ayrshire. It came from just about everyone in Scotland, Stirlingshire, you know, yeah. Falkirk, great coal mines there. Yeah, and that's good for those local economies. Yeah, and what happened? The railways brought it. They filled themselves up with coal wagons. They ran yeah. themselves on water and burning coal. Your only problem is in those days, a steam engine is a very, very inefficient thing. Whereas an electrical engine is about 85% efficient. Yeah, yeah. Incredible, isn't it? But we had all that stuff. That's why companies like Yarrow's that build all the naval ships moved up from London. They were a London company. Uh -huh. And when you go out, I mean, I've maybe said this before, but when you go out walking the dogs at Mugduck, you'll come yes. to Craigend Castle. That was the Yarrow's house. Ah, right. Okay. <laughs> right. You, you see, so, so it's all about us. And there was, you know, the Clyde is deep and fairly safe, superb for building ships, and you could yes. get the iron for the steel locally. Your huge yes. steel works at Ravenscraig in central Scotland at Motherwell there. Yeah, it's, it's like a sleeping giant, isn't it? Oh, it's it was fantastic really because enough. we were self-sufficient, so there was none of this saying, oh, yes, the wholesale price of gas will have to go to Russia and that. You think, no, 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 we do all our own gas in Scotland. We do our own yeah. wool. We do our own threads. Clarks and, and Coates at Paisley did all the threads for the world. Yeah. Singers at Clyde Bank did the sewing machines so that everybody in the house could make you a, a pair of trousers. <laughs> it's a sleeping giant. And, you know, I think these are all things if we do become independent that we need to... Awaken. We need to get back at looking. Let's use. We know we've got the resources. We know they've got. You know they're of. Un, you know absolutely infinity in terms of value. And we know that Scotland could just become boom town. It could. You know. It's you know. Open. Well, listen, Scotty. Thank you very much for taking my call. We'll let some other people come your, on. Your call's come superb. On. <laughs> and I'll say thank you. Do. Thank you, do to you, Karim. We'll catch up tomorrow night. Bye -bye now. There we are. What a fantastic guy. Right. What have we got here, folks? Here's the chat. Dinky Doo, Lasses, Beachy Beachy, Dinky Doo, Scotty. Hello, all. Hello, there's a Scotty. Scott from Drum Chapel. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Oh, my God. Thank bloody hell he's off that stupid phone line. Uh, hello? Who are you like? I beg your pardon. That's one of our finest colours. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me, matey boy. Is that matey boy? It is matey boy. Yes, matey boy. You listen to me. We are educating and informing the nation here. So don't you come on and start cheeking up. No, not for 20 minutes. Not for 18 minutes. Uh, I listen, buddy. I came back from Clare College. I was invited down to an afternoon organ recital in Clare College. Oh, fantastic. Be too thick to know Clare College.
college, eh? No, no, I know Cambridge. I know it very, very well. Beautiful college. Lovely organ. All panelled. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, huh. ah, that sorted you out, matey. Right. I'll get out. I'll that'll I'll that'll out. stop you farting in church. Well, 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 just, uh, just listen up. Yes, you, I, that sorted you out, isn't it? Just pen back into yours. Listen to this. Colonial says he's going to tell you to shut your mouth soon. I can feel it. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Okay. Go on. Uh, this had uh, better be good after you checking up. Have you apologised to Kareem? He talks shit. absolute hundred percent common no, sense. No, no, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you. While we're on the subject, I was listening in um, when I was in Cambridge. We were sipping a few ports, and I was telling my college, um, God rest Stephen Cleobury. Don't know if you know Stephen Cleobury. Yes. Uh, ah, you know Stephen Cleobury. He was the um, Stephen uh, died. Stephen died. I think he had an accident with his bicycle. Stephen ah. Cleobury was the director of music for King's College, Cambridge. You know too much. I you can tell you. Yes, indeed, I know right, exactly who you mean. Right, pin back your A marvellous, marvellous musician. I was so sorry to hear of his passing. He was, and I was um, fortunate enough to be um, tutored by this Sir Philip Ledger. I remember Philip head. as well. Philip was the principal of the Royal Scottish Academy after Sir David Lumsden. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know how you know that. Uh, I've got story. Philip Ledger. I think he's playing the organ, the cuckoo and the nightingale handle. He does indeed, yes. Now, let's get back to basics. Am I right? Yes, you are right. Yes, you are right. Yes, I remember these people. The great Sir David Lumsden, I knew him very well. David Lumsden was fantastic. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. And his son is the is is the organist of um of Winchester Cathedral. Yes, and now he's been taken over by now Sir George McPhee, um from Paisley. Now, George yes, McPhee indeed. There, yes. Now, listen, um, I propose a couple of things if you can just listen to me. Just pin back your lugs just now. Um, no more than five minutes per um, caller. Right, so you think I should ration Kareem to five. What about ten minutes for Kareem? No, five, five, five minutes. But five I minutes. Have to, I have to say to you, I have to say to you, and I am loath to tell you, the caller from yesterday regarding the Margaret Thatcher. Wonderful, wonderful idea. Wh which one? A statue of Margaret Thatcher in Scotland? Yes. Absolutely. Where would you think that statue should be placed in Scotland? It should, it should be in George Square. George Square. George Square. Right, I'm going to put this out to the people of Scotland who are watching the internet phone in right now. Would well, you like a statue of Margaret Thatcher, life size or even much bigger? And would you like it in the edge of George Square or right in the centre? The centre. Right. The centre. Please meet me. Okay. Please, yes. So like yes. Nelson's yes. column in London, the centre of George Square in Glasgow should have a massive statue of Margaret Thatcher. This is, this is the thing, Scotty. What I was thinking about today, I, I listened to your full um, recording last night. I was, I was up. I was listening to your show. Yes. Um, it, it, it was fantastic. And the guy came on and proposed that idea. And I thought, hang on a minute. Let, let's take this further. Why don't we reintroduce modern history with the Thatcher years, right? So we get the councils and we get the government in Scotland to look at the fantastic um, uh, history of what Margaret Thatcher did um, for the country, and then we maybe try and I'm, 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 I'm just speaking out of tongue here, but I think we should have, now I, this might be just a wee bit out of people's, you know, your restriction, but let's have Come on, come on, let's have it. What, what are you saying? I think we should have a national St. 
Margaret's Day in Scotland. St. Margaret's Day. Well, I mean, St. Margaret, of course, was very much uh, a saint of Scotland, St. Margaret's Chapel at Edinburgh Castle. Yes, well, I propose that we have, because Margaret, um, if I'm allowed to say this, had more balls than any of the other male prime ministers that we have in, 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 in Scottish history. I mean, Margaret was fantastic, Scotty. She just did everything her way. She was so... Well, she was, backed, she was backed by a lot of very good Scots. I mean, she had oh, Willie Whitelaw, who was, was a she Scots Guards was officer, officer was major in the Scots oh, Guards. She had oh, George Younger, I told you about last night. You know, so she had... Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of very prominent Scots stories in those days. I think Margaret Thatcher should be an epiphany um, in Scotland, and I think we should actually absolutely venerate her um, in whatever way we feel. And there's going to be lots of... The venerable, like the venerable St. Margaret. Uh, so you I, think I, she should be sanctified? Yes! And you I, think there should be a beatification? A beautiful song. A hymn to a hymn to Saint Margaret. Oh, beautiful! Oh, this is my day. This the first of October. Yes, we were going to try and beatify Saint Margaret Thatcher in Scotland. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. Now, listen. I'm sorry to say that you're going to get some idiots coming on tonight and saying, "Oh, do 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 do." I'm sorry. The the moon is wonderful. Apart from apart from that, um, get Kareem and everyone else off. Cap the five minutes, Scotty, because we need to have more people coming on. I'm sorry, Kareem is a bit is a bit you know he's a bit boring now. I'm sorry to say that. To you. Well, you've been on you've been on for six minutes now, yeah, so you've already I, overplayed I, your hand. Shut, shut, shut your gob. No, I don't you tell me to I shut my gob. No, You've no, already no, overplayed no, your hand, chummy. You've pinned back your ears. I've pinned back my ears and heard enough from you. I'm going to put this to the nation. You've you, pinned your... Don't you now. I'm going to put you... I'm going to, I'm going to cut you off because you're boring as... You're boring as rigid now. There we are. Right, that's matey boy gone. Doom the swatty. Uh, do tell us, who have we got here? Lots and lots of lovely things. Uh, what have we got here, Kirsten Dinky do? I believe the statue of Margaret Thatcher belongs in Barlini, the milk snatcher. Have it on a 10 foot plinth so she looks down on you, says Cullelio. Well, I mean, Nelson's on more than a 10 foot plinth. This man's not been taking his loony pills, says Fritata. Dinky do, everybody. Lovely to have you with us. Bye bye. There we are. He's gone. Cut him, the Scottish TikToker. Cut him off. Loving the hat, Scotty Dinky do, boss boy. Thank you, Kissy, for 72. Everybody on TikTok, get following Scotty McClue. If you want to hear the phone in, join in the phone in, then look at my TikTok bio. And just below that, you'll see a live link to the YouTube channel. Get on to the YouTube. Follow me. Follow me on Twitch, Scotty underscore McClure. You're, you're listening and watching the internet phone in. Friday night, 10 till 11. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello. Hello. Hi, is that you, Scotty? I think you do, yes. How are you doing, my man? Rab again. Rab, how fantastic. Turn your background down, Rab, so we can hear oh, you. Sorry, I, I, I had earphones there, there a minute ago. Don't but bother. Anyway, what, what, what I want to talk about, see that crackpot there of Donna Bissatcher? Yes. I slap him purple to a Right, you, you, don't, you don't think he was correct? No, I, went, I just want to have him. That, 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 that's, anyway... But I'm only here to talk about Scotty. Well, that's not good. You you need to think. What was it about what he was saying that you didn't like? Oh, he's on about Thatcher. Yes. She, she's, he, she's on about Ravens. She shut the whole community down, did she not? Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, she didn't help any of the working class communities. No, so that's why I because they weren't them. big Tory voters, voters, but they are now, apparently. But anyway, what I want to talk about. See, see how the 
supposed to be a sort of uh, HGV uh, driver. Yes. Do you know how the Russian people aren't to, for license to, to, to get driver? And that might cause a commotion, but they're not. What, to have the Russians in? No, no. Russian anti people to take. Like or rushing to rushing to people them. into passing the test. Well, yeah. I was very, very concerned last week because I heard that one of the things they were looking at cutting back on was learning to reverse properly. Well, now, come on. I mean, one of the great things about our I HGV drivers... I know, but I watched a guy the other day and he went... He came out of a narrow junction pointed towards the traffic coming the other way, stopped at the lights, moved forward as much as he could, and then brought his trailer around. And I thought, what a beautiful, beautiful piece of driving. And I thought, I don't think I could do that. Eh? Of course I'm listening to you. Yes, I've just had big time on the TikTok. He says, I'm a trucker, mate. Most of your training was spent doing practice reversing. There's your answer immediately on Scotty McClure's phone in. Well, I can't drive a truck, Scotty, and I can't reverse it anyway, so it takes me all my time to reverse my motor when I'm in driving a lorry. See, when I drove the baker's van, right, a boy stops me one morning and says, could you tell me where such and such a street is? I says, I can. I'm not entirely sure. It's either the first one or the second one to your right there. He goes, can you be sure, please, mate? It takes me about three miles to get this thing dumped. Oh, but what's another one? See, 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 do you like vertical blinds or the other ones? Okay. Oh, I don't bother with vertical blinds. I, I just have the up and down. Aye. So it's a of vertical blinds. I don't know. They're, they're absolutely fine if you want to go to all that bother of putting in the tracks and everything. Ah, but they're easy to go, I don't know. Vertical blinds. Aye. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> there we go. Off he goes. Uh, you're listening and watching Scotty McClue with the phone in. We've got 27 minutes of quality. There we are. What do you think of Gaelic in Scotland? If you look at your TikTok videos I've just done for you, I'm an HGV1 female driver, says Kitty. Fantastic. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Good evening, Scotty. How are you? How are we? Who is that? Who's Scotty, can you hear me? Yes, who's that? Charlie. Charlie, that's Charlie. great. Always say your name, Charlie, otherwise I don't know. No, of course, of course. It, it takes me a wee bit of delay. The reason being is because I just switch my headphones and they plug in the phone. But I've got Top to man, you've got us now. Lovely to hear you. Yeah. Scotty, I think, you know, um, today, well, maybe yesterday or so, seen the, the, the launch of the NHS app with the, the, um, the, the passport, you know, the, the COVID yes. passport. Yes, yes. And I think, yes. It's, it's a great idea. It's absolutely great idea, and um, I think you know. Also, you know, the media saying you know there's, uh, it's, it's got issues, but then there's so many people going. Uh, you know, at one time there will be issues. Of course, I think people need to people need to calm down and use it for what it is. It's an absolute license to say that you're absolutely fine, and you you you're going to get a, a you know a a multi place you know like a concert or a, a football game. And then use it for what it is, is to show that you're actually protected and you're protecting everybody else around about you. Correct. And, you know, calm, you know, I think everybody should just calm down. Everybody. Calm down. Yes. Uh, of course, it's got these teething problems, but it's because of everybody downloading it and everybody logging in at one time. These are teething problems, but it will sort itself out. Absolutely, yes, good indeed. We're not really going to go into discussing it because the whole purpose of the phone-in is that we leave all the pandemic stuff to mainstream media and we have a chat about sorry. the things we want to talk about. Okay, sorry, Scott. No, not at all. No, no, listen, it was good of you to raise it and you did it very well. Good point, well made. Yes, Scott, can I ask you then? Can 
Can I ask you then, what, yes. what was your point tonight? Because I didn't, I, didn't I didn't hear the start of your We're point. discussing what everything point? tonight. We've just had a gentleman phone us about a statue of Margaret Thatcher in George Square in Glasgow. No, that, that, would, that wouldn't be acceptable. He would like that it would right in the centre because he feels that she brought us kicking and screaming into the 20th century. I don't think that's right. I, 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 I mean, that, that would be a, that would be a heat really, in a sense, wouldn't it, Scotty? But well, mind you, when they put Donald Dewar up now, Donald Dewar, you couldn't have met a nicer man, an absolute <laughs> gent. And he got when they put a statue of him up, they had to raise it higher because he was getting That's damaged. That's correct. The glasses as well. Damaged. Yes, then yeah. somebody knocked his specs off and stuff. And then, of course, we've got the Duke of Wellington outside the Stirling Library. And he's got a yeah. cone in his head. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, and the amount of people that, you know, the amount of people that actually go up there and, and I mean, I, you know, hats off, you know, excuse the pun, but hats off from, you know, even climbing it and, and doing it. I, I would be doing it, you know, it's stupid, it's silly, you know, but that cone always ends back up there. And you've seen, uh, have you seen the animation, Scotty, where the, the horse, the horse's tail kind of throws it up on the, on the head. Oh, that's Bell. is that not King Billy? No, 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 it's uh, no, it's Duke of Wellington. Oh, the Duke of, yeah, now, I'm the sure name. there's one in the trunk gate, is there not of King Billy? I couldn't tell you, I've never seen And it. apparently, the horse's there. tail used to move. Oh, Scotty, is that right in the middle of between um, trunk gate and then in, in, in between? Uh, oh, the tall booth. Back? I think between the tall booth along the trunk gate, there was a King Billy, or there is a King Billy. I've never seen the statue. Uh, oh, do you know what? Actually, yes, yes, you're right. It's right at the tall booth. Yeah, right the there's Scottish corner. TikToker That's telling us King Billy's on the tall booth. Yes, yes. That now absolutely, he's absolutely. now you see King Billy. He could become a figure of hate as well. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, he was, as a man, he was a very, very, very bad man. Yeah, but then, but then, going back to your question as well. But then people to... loved him, you know? Yeah, but, but then, yeah, absolutely. But then, go back to your question to myself, you know, do you think that my, a, a, a statue of my statue should be erected in George Square? Well, that's the point. I think what we need to do is put it to the nation and get a few opinions. That's why we've got the phone in. Yes, absolutely. You know, and absolutely, if everybody yeah, agrees, if everybody on Scotty McClure's phone in, on the internet phone in, says, no, let's do it, then we can look at, you know, raising money for Margaret Thatcher's statue. No, absolutely, Scotty. And then, you know what? I actually forgot. It's, it's your show. I shouldn't be asking you questions. You should be asking me questions. No, no, you can <laughs> ask me anything you like because, listen, we are just us on here. And we started this about four weeks ago, and it's just growing and growing and growing. Scotty, it's, it's, it's doing phenomenally well. I mean, you, you, you're, you're on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. Um, we're on TikTok. You know, we're on YouTube. I mean, the YouTube is massive, and I think anybody on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and follow. You'll get the notifications because we're on Monday to Thursday, 9 till 10. And then on a Friday and Saturday, we're on from 10 till 11. Absolutely. And Scotty, just to finish, I don't know why you're not in the back of your bus, but I think the way things are going, you might end up in the back of your bus. Well, I've got a good face for the back of your bus. <laughs> no, Scotty, thank you, dude. Thank you, dude, Charlie. Yeah, Lovely well. to hear you. Take great care of yourself. Thank you, dude. And thank you for all your encouragement over the peace, you know. <laughs> peace out. Thank you, dude, la. Thank you, dude. Thank you, dude, Charlie. That's fantastic stuff. It'll end up like the Colston statue that chucked it in the drink. Oh, Kalelio, that's bad news. Now, Kitty Babe, if you say that once more, it will be a lifetime ban. We don't allow spamming. All right. Hello, you're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Happy Scotty, yes, Kitty Babe. Hey, top man. Hello, you're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Scotty, it's me, Glenn. Glenn, how marvellous to hear you. I Glenn, I just, I wondered if you'd fallen out with us. What do you reckon to uh, what the police commissioner's come out with? Uh, you know, if you get into, if you 
wedded about were playing closed office for Scotty and uh, stop a bus and things like that. To stop a stop a bus, knock on a door, scream. What do you reckon to that? Well, the problem that we've got is, as always, the minority in the world cause yeah. tremendous difficulty and damage for the majority. So we had one murderer, right, right. which is one murderer too much, who happened no. to be a serving police officer. With, with me and you know what I'm talking about. We know what you're talking about. So yeah. we had this now. Uh, yeah. You know, we can't bring that beautiful young lady back. Definitely and the are. evil person is going to spend the rest of his life in jail. In days yeah. gone by, he would have forfeited his life. The life, the life Scotty, and and that would have been the end of that. Now, Justice. it's a dreadful, dreadful situation. But then yeah. to make life very anxiety-making yeah. for everyone as a result yeah. of it, do you think just the system's wrong then, Scott? No, I think that I think that we need to rebuild proper trust in the police. See, when I was young, the police had massive, massive respect. Yeah. You know, the crims were frightened of the police because yeah, the police used to take them up a close and give them a thrashing. Scott, they not know that. Well, no, but they need to learn to be, and the police need to know that they are in the right. You heard me talk about Sir Percy Sillito. Now, Sir Percy yeah. Sillito, the chief constable of Glasgow, got rid of the gangs because he gave them such a thrashing mm -hmm. that the gangs were scared stiff of the police. Now, do you know where Sir Percy Sillito had, had come from as chief constable? Have a guess. Oh, no. Sheffield. Yes, he was the chief constable of Sheffield. Now, in those days, Sheffield, the Sheffielders, right, hard, hard working, heavy drinking. Yeah. So, Yorkshiremen. So, you know, oh, yeah. the, there was a lot to take on. So, don't tell me that they would be for the faint hearted. Do you know what I'm saying? Get what you're saying. A big, yeah. heavy, drunken steel worker on a Friday night. This, this, this respects working both ways with uh, yeah. civilians and police, though, isn't it, really? Yes. You don't get some decent law abiding policemen, do you, and police women? Are well, I've, no, you, the, listen, women. you know, 99% of the police will be outstanding public servants. We've got to be cautious, aren't we? It's the one percent. It's the rotten yeah. apple in the bottom of the barrel That's rotting the, the rest of them. That's the one you've got to be really aware yeah. of. Yeah, that the rotten That's apple. You've got to watch that. Even even when it comes to that, though, it shouldn't have to be like that, should this guy? No, no, it, no. Shouldn't. it shouldn't have to be like that. So we need to weed out the rotten apples early on. And from yeah. what I can gather, I'm not going to go into it because I don't know 100%, but from right, what yeah. I can gather, there were vetting challenges with this particular guy. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a hint that there should have been much better. Well, there's not a hint. There should have been much better vetting. 100%. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he should have been shadowed, cleared out early, and then watched never have been allowed into the system really. but cleared have, cleared out of the police force early doors shouldn't have even, even got past that stage should I? yeah i think um it makes like i said it makes people wary wary, wary, wary really of um what's was on the side and it was not done it really to be honest yeah yeah you're absolutely right so so you know we need to look at this across the board there needs to be, as you say, respect working both ways. But when I was we, if you saw the police, you just got off your mark. Yeah, not that. And they walked about in pairs and they would nod to you, evening. And you thought, oh. You know? Some still do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good Yorkshire policeman, you know what I'm saying? Very few and far 
between though, isn't it? That's the, that's the trouble. And I can remember a policeman saying to me, you know, in Barnsley, we used to get a young lad that rang up every night and he said, Hi, Scotty, it's Bobby Brown Pants here. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Do you remember him on the phone in on Hallam FM? And I was talking to a policeman, he says, well, you tell him, Scotty, Bobby Black Pants will be after him. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to have uh, bone knuckling conversation is to do a bit of light number of times, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, we, you know, we do Some need to discuss, we need to discuss these things, you know, and choose, go on. Choose how, choose how hard on knuckle they are. Sometimes you've got to come to these points, are not you? Yeah, you've got to come to the points now. Here, before you go, Glenn, because I need to dash off, but Margaret Thatcher, a statue of her. Now, a lot of Sheffield people have been voting Tory, haven't they? They have, yeah, quite a few, yeah. What were they thinking of then, do you think? Uh, they're, they're against her, aren't they, to be honest? One or two, some are far, some are against her, aren't they? Just... Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, after what she did to South Yorkshire, do you know what I mean? She did a, she did a couple of good things for certain minorities and a few for the other sides, didn't she? It's, no. Just, it's just the way it goes in this guy. You can't have your cake and eat it, can you? You can't really laugh. Glenn, it's been a privilege as always, and I'm going to say dinky-doo. Like I said, Scotty, I've just left you for a couple of nights. You know, to get some new callers come on, but... You're a top man. They, 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 they tend to... Uh, this will be a little bit cagey, aren't they? I mean, I don't what, do, what do you think about them saying that, that you know, the likes of Kareem should be cut down to five minutes? If he wants to form, I don't... Absolutely. Don't My I feeling don't is if you can get through, you deserve to get on. Exactly. If, they, if, they, if they've got enough mouth on it to say what they want to say, for it up. I'm so good for you, Glenn. Dinky do la. Look after your son. Say the, say the la. Say the top man. You're live on Scottish phone, ain't Who's that? Hello? Ni hao. Ni hao han hao, George. Great, we can't hear you very clearly, George. Can you speak into your mic? That brilliant, better for hearing you. Yeah, long time no see, you know? Yes, how did you manage to find us? That's superb. Oh, I can't do you, don't worry. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, listen, have you survived the pandemic business wise? What's that, George? There's never a moment of time that you can't miss from hearing your voice. Oh, no, you need to hear Scotty McClure. Now, George, and we need to hear you. We need to hear you. Have you survived the pandemic business-wise? Yes, Good man. Good man. You're a oh, great man, George. That's you know, fantastic. I've been so busy working here. I've been so busy working in the show. You've been so busy working. Well, you know where we are now. Yeah, I've been in Glasgow as well. All right. Yeah, then I went to Lanark for two days. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. I love it. Then I was in Edinburgh for a month and a half. Yep. With a show. Wow. You know? You're a great man, George. We even had them in the kilt of the Scottish tradition. The Scottish tradition. Then we made them sing Rock Woman, you know? Oh, wow. We love it. Fantastic. George, this is a privilege to hear you. I'm going to press on just now, but we'll catch up soon. Yes, we will. Okay. Uh, take care of your dear self and dinky do. Dinky do, George. That's a great guy. That's George from Edinburgh. He used to phone the phone ins all the time and he's managed to find us. Can't wait for independence, says Urwali. Right. You're live with Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello. Hello. Uh, sorry, I had to just excise my... Um, no, no, listen, you've got a right to call twice. We did agree. And you're thinking everybody should be five minutes limit. Oh, oh yes. No, no. I've come up with a, a musical composition. 
Right. And the composition will be Hail Glory, St. Margaret of Scotland, Ova Maria. Right, and wait a minute. Hail Glory, St. Margaret of Scotland. Oh Maria. Oh Maria. Yeah. Now the yes, only thing yes, is yes, copyright yes, wise, there's yes, there's yes. nothing in here that's going to be a problem. Shut shut your gloves just now, buddy. Um this will be the Scottish national anthem that I will be composing. Right. You're gonna compose the Scottish national anthem live on TikTok, YouTube, yes, yes Facebook, LinkedIn Live. Twitch, Scotty underscore McClure. Yeah, because because we, 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 no no one's recognition um, the fantastic work that Lady Thatcher. I mean, Lady Thatcher was fantastic. She was absolutely fantastic. What she, was what, what? What? Where does your adoration for Lady Thatcher come from? What did she do that you thought was so good for Scotland? Yeah, good. Good, good point, and I will answer that very brief, uh, briefly. Right. Um, the, the, the point was that what the decisions that she made in the throne that she was. We've got somebody watching from Ballymena in Northern Ireland. Yeah, I, I think to, to be honest with you that she um, she had more. I, I said to you before, more, she had more balls than the male prime minister right. in the entire um, history. I think that she was really adamant. I think she took care of the country. She was fantastic. She had Dennis. Dennis was a fantastic husband. Um, he was actually. Dennis Thatcher was a great character. The only thing is she sold off part of the uh, industry and the client to a company that he was involved in. And it was a knockdown price, so I believe. Can't comment on that one, Scotty, because I wasn't sure about that history. Right. Um, no, no, I'm just I, dropping that into the mix. You know, he was a fantastic guy, but she was obviously looking after her in, you know. Yeah, well, you always do these things just to, to try and try and upset me, you because you've you you seem to think you're 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 more credible than me, you well I well I, I probably am more credible than you in, in, in a lot yeah. of ways. But I think you're more credible than me in top at the highest echelons of music and the charts. Well, this is not this is not the platform to. We have a different we have a different kind of credibility, you and I. Well, well yeah, well, yeah. You, 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 you I respect you I respect your fine knowledge, but I'm very interested in your adoration of uh, Lady Margaret Thatcher. You want well, her sanctified I, I, and beatified? Ah, uh, soul of my saviour. Soul of my saviour? I think Margaret Thatcher was absolutely wonderful and um, to condemn her. Wash me in the water flowing from thy side. Uh, wash me from, yes, uh, sanctify me. Sanctify me, yes, yeah, exactly, it's fantastic. Um, yes, I, 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 I don't want to, um, you know, I, I, I know that there's a lot of love. That's the one, that's the one. See, I'm not just oh, an athlete, you know. Oh, I didn't realize I, you, you do that. I'm a black yeah. belt in karaoke. I'm going to just leave you just now, buddy, because I want you to help. I, I just basically say to you that Margaret is a fantastic, wonderful woman. Right. And everyone. I will put this to the people of Scotland to see if they agree with you, if they have the, the yeah. same enthusiasm for Margaret Thatcher. Right, buddy boy, and just you get back to okay? I will see you later. Thank you, do, Lala. Fantastic okay. stuff, right. That's one of the country's finest musicians. You're live on Scottish Funny News, that? Hello, this is Derek. Derek, how are we? I'm good. Listen, I was the one who phoned last night and said Margaret Thatcher statue in Scotland. Well, you've started something on Scotty McClue's phone in, Derek, because they want a full height or double size statue right in the centre of George Square in Glasgow. Oh, well, I've come up, I've thought of a couple of 
goodies as well. So right. right, go on, Derek. Yep, number one, in Scotland, we re I reckon they should pay more of income tax. We already do. Yeah, and number two, they should ban whiskey. Ban whiskey. Yeah, let's upset the buggers. Well, I don't think we should be doing that, Derek, so I'll say think you do to you. There we are. Off he jolly well goes. Now then, can't wait for independence, Azur Willie. Fantastic stuff. Who have we got here? The top hat for the Orange Order, says Jack. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. He's stumped. Good on you, Scotty. What a mug. Right. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hello, Scotty. It's Kareem. I'm using my ah, second call. Kareem, of course you can use your second call. Kareem, I don't know if you've heard tonight, but we've had a couple of people saying that you're on far too long. I heard the person earlier on, and I had to laugh. Uh, I don't think you are, because I'm responsible for keeping you on sometimes, because we have so much to discuss. I don't need to phone in. If people are bored with me, that's, that's fine. I just phone in for conversation. With yourself. Right. Well, I've just had Methadone Mick on here saying Kareem's a wee legend. Oh, and then I've had that. Scottish TikToker saying, yes, Kareem's always too long. Ah, right, okay. now, now, what I like about this is it seems that you've divided and ruled. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I, I think the way, the way I see it is you, you can't please everybody. Um, You'll never uh, please all the people all the time, Kareem. And you see, you always talk terrific sense. I've never right. heard you talk anything that's not factual. And I've never heard you say anything that isn't an interesting point. Now, that's a pretty good recommendation from Scotty McClue with something like 40 years experience in mainstream media. Thank you for it. That means a lot, Scotty. Do you know? I do try to think of something like, I remember the time when you were on Nation Radio, and when I used to phone in, I would at least try to have two types of questions every night, and, you know, just to start the debate. Yes. You know, and, and I think that chap yesterday who started the debate about the Margaret Thatcher start, I mean, that's that's what it's all about, people phoning in, putting across opinions, and people talking about it. Yes, and I mean, there's uh, Matey Boy saying, go for it, right in the centre of George Square. Here we've got, geez, know him again, says Betty Jo. And then we've got, we've got, it's your show, Scotty, and it's up to you how long Kareem gets. Absolutely. You can't say fairer than that unless you can't pronounce your Fs or THs. <laughs> I would say, in, in terms of Margaret Thatcher, um, I sent you a video um, about that, what I was talking yesterday. Uh, and I, I watched some of the other videos. Now, I was too young to remember her, obviously. I was a, I was a wee toddler. Yes. She was in charge. However, um, I think she came across as a very very articulate, very well-spoken individual. And she has that presence. When she speaks to you, Scotty, when you look at her and she interviews you, she's talking sideways on. She's looking down at you. She's 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 home. You have to home in here. So she's sucking you right in. And it's just the techniques that she used. It was all really, it was really interesting. Yeah, she's that. very skilled. I mean, this lady, um, I think, had an honours degree in chemistry from Oxford University. Right. And then she, right. I think she did a, she, she went to the law and did a law degree. <laughs> she was a very, very highly educated career woman. She knew her stuff and I felt like a lot, of, she was using a lot of the key buzzwords probably back in those days. Yes. It was enterprise this, enterprise that. Now, don't get me wrong, I think in terms of leadership, if you were to look at it with conservative leaders now, compared to what she was, yes, she's miles ahead of them. Um, however, what she did do to Scotland, I think, if you speak to a lot of the elder generation, they will never, ever forgive what she had done to Scotland and the lives that, you know, she destroyed. I think Scotland. you're absolutely right. Kareem, you'll not believe this, but we are right out That's of time. It. Sorry, I'm, I've been on here, but no. thank you, Scott. Fantastic. Okay. God bless you. Join us tomorrow, please. Fantastic right. stuff. Night-night.
There we are. That's our Kareem. Now, guys, I'm going to have to say bye-bye to the TikTokers. Thank you for being with us tonight. You are outstanding. And there it goes. Now, uh, right, and I'm also going to have to say good night to all the beautiful people live here on the phone. And thank you so much for joining us. Tonight has been an absolute blast. From everybody here at the phone in, me, Scotty McClure, good night. God bless. Thank you, dear. And to our lads, join us tomorrow night at 10 o'clock sharp for the Saturday phone in. Good night and God bless.